how pathetic can some people be? I was drinking. Everybody drinking alcohol tonight? Yeah? I was drinking scotch earlier. I drink until I pass out. I don't know how many people do that. When I was in... <laughs> just that one sad girl. It's like... Yeah. Hell yeah! Woohoo! I drink until I pass out. In college, every time I drank, I would pass out. Like, every single... It was like my thing, you know? It got to the point where even before I went out, I'd go ahead and draw a d on my face. Because it was going to happen eventually. Some of you didn't laugh at that joke. Uh, that's because you can trust your friends. Some of you did laugh at that joke. That's because when you're passed out, your friends think it's hilarious to draw a penis on your face. Some of you laughed really hard at that joke. You're the people that draw d on people's faces. So if you're sitting next to somebody who laughed really hard, you may want to ease off your Long Island iced tea <laughs> before they go Michelangelo on your ass. Dumbass of the day. 93.3 KZOC. We're about to have our second Frank Whaley uh, reference in the, in the last half hour. I don't think Frank Whaley's ever been mentioned on one radio show twice unless he was being interviewed by said radio hosts. Do you remember the movie Career Opportunities in which... Frank Whaley oh, yeah. is a target worker and yes. he gets locked in the store with Jennifer Conley. Oh, my God. Oh, that's, that's like perfect. So hot. Jennifer yeah. Oh, so hot yeah, I remember being movie. a young kid going. So hot in that oh, movie. how I would love to be locked in. And, yeah. <laughs> John Hughes movie. Underrated John Hughes movie. Um, Jeremy Van Ert of Wisconsin had a similar thing happen to him except for it was at the convenience store. They're open 24-7. How do you get locked in the cooler? I think it's hilarious that somebody would get locked in a beer cooler. This is definitely a first. Yeah. Um, Wait, how, yeah, how do you get locked in something that the store's open? Store's open 24-7. Beer cooler. Wisconsin State Law says no beer sales after midnight. Oh, I see. And then it will be open again at 6 o'clock in the morning for you to buy your beer. Your so wine. because it was not selling any beer, no one was going back there, and some it's somebody two got them. The morning here, right? Yeah, it's two o'clock. You can make a run before. Yeah. yeah, I used to know that. Like that used to be like the most important thing to know in my life, and now it's like I, I don't even I don't even pay attention to that anymore. As a casualty of my job and my family situation, I don't even know. Like if somebody asked me and say, "Hey, we're gonna go get some beer," I'd be like, "I don't know. Can we?" I'm glad you're here to help me along on that. Um, yeah, Jeremy was uh, locked in the beer cooler. Uh, His at, name's Jeremy? Yeah. Gives Jeremy a bad name. Well, I don't know. He's kind of a local hero in Wisconsin. He say on Tuesday, 38-year-old Jeremy Van Ert walked inside the beer cooler at Quick Trip in Marshfield just before midnight. The subject found himself locked within the beer cooler. Um, knew that uh, Quick Trip would not sell him any beer after midnight, oh. so he decided to... Uh, remain in the beer cooler, consumed uh, four individual beers. Vanner. <laughs> Do you remember when we were in Texas? Jeremy and I went to Texas for a bowl game once in El Paso. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we went to go play golf uh, uh, like the Sunday morning uh, before the the actual bowl game, which I believe took place on a Monday. And so we went, we were going to head up to the golf course. And this is like, it wasn't too early. I think we had like a noon tea time. It was winter time. So I think we went to the convenience store by like 11 o'clock in the morning. We go back to open the beer. And we're like, oh, hey, you guys, you guys left your locks on your beer. Yeah, it was a big rod that went all the way through all the doors and had padlocks on both sides. And I remember thinking at the time, God, I can't believe nobody's tried to purchase beer but in the last five hours because I was equating it to the liquor laws where we lived. And they're like, yeah, it's before noon, you dummy. Well, no, it was Sunday. Yeah. They didn't sell beer on Sunday. No, Sundays. they did sell it on Sunday. It's just you had to wait till noon is what the, oh. guy, the guy said. I was like, oh, you're kidding me. I remember how bummed out we were because our tea time was right at noon. That means we were paying full price for beers on the golf course. I was like, oh, man, that stinks. This is horrible. I'm never moving to Texas. This place is a, El Paso. a dump. And El Paso is a dump. Um, but this guy uh, wanted the beer. He knew that they would not sell him the beer. So he's like, crap, what do I do? I better go in the beer cooler. And then the guy comes around and locks up the beer cooler. Yeah, And so, he had four beers. You now, know, by the time you're getting through that third beer, you're hold, starting to, you're starting to second guess your uh, 
Ten second guess your decision. Hold on a second. He didn't just have uh, four beers. He did have four beers according to the report. But the police report states that he had an 18-ounce bottle of Ice House. Which, 18? You sell it in 18s? What the hell is that? that is That's weird. a Wisconsin thing, yeah. huh? And three cans of your favorite, Four Loco. Four Loco? Yeah. Oh, the energy drink that has alcohol in it. What is Four Loco again? It's an energy drink that has alcohol Wasn't in it. Wasn't it banned or something like that? Well, they, they, they banned it for a while until they changed the uh, percentage of alcohol. Because it was like killing or people or something? Yeah, people were getting crazy on it. Okay. Bannard also knocked down several 30 packs of beer and is believed <laughs> to have urinated during his time inside. Well, you gotta ah, go, you gotta go. That is the problem right there. You gotta go, you gotta go. Well, you're in there all night. I don't know. I mean, I can barely make it from 10 until 4 o'clock in the morning without having to go to the now, bathroom. Now, I get it's Wisconsin, so he's bundled up, right? Because, I mean, it's a beer cooler. It's cold in there. It's probably, what, 45 degrees? Maybe in it might have low been, 40s. Yeah, but it might have been warmer in the beer cooler than it was outside. Yeah, it could have been. Because yeah. it was Wisconsin, October. <laughs> a customer came by the beer cooler at about 6 a.m. and saw him inside. They notified <laughs> management. Vanner was let out. Was he a passed out or was he still drinking beer? <laughs> I don't know. But uh, if the person working at the Quick, st- Quick Mart, it was what it was called. The person working at the Quick Mart did not notice. Is that person really doing a good job? Like the cut, like he had to work, or he or she had to work all night long. Did not know that the person was in the beer cooler, <laughs> using it as a toilet. He knocked over several thirty packs. Did they not hear the noise? <laughs> what well, the you know, hell were they doing? Listening to music, talking on the phone. God, you know those people that work overnight shift just sit back there and just play. Yeah, I, I don't used, know what you do now. I used to play solitaire. But. I, I used to uh, work an overnight shift, and I'd actually go to sleep for like three hours. Yeah, you used to go into a van and, yeah. and go into a I'd lock car. up the office, go, uh, go. They had these like uh, passenger vans that would pick up people at the airport, and they made a nice bed in the back of the van right there. You just lay there, get a little shut-eye for about three hours, then wake up and be like, oh, I resume my shift. What happens to the guy that didn't know there was somebody camping out in the beer cooler using it as a bathroom? I'd fire him if I'm, if I'm the, if I'm the, ma- after, the, the not, manager. I make him clean up the mess first. <laughs> That's for sure. Jackass. Um, I almost think he's more the dumbass here than the guy that was drunk that snuck in because obviously he was you he's a dumbass. You just don't want a Jeremy to be called the dumbass. <laughs> yeah. He was cited for not paying for the beverages and arrested on probation. Well, he hadn't left yet. He was stuck. <laughs> Give him a break. But he also urinated in there. <laughs> um, and uh, his probation that he was on prior, um, the conditions of that probation uh, had, no, banned, no pissing in a beer cooler. had banned him from drinking alcohol. So he does have a problem. And this is probably rock bottom. Yeah. Congar- congratulations to Jeremy. Congratulations. Congratulations, Jeremy Vinert. <laughs> You're never near me. Dumbass of the day. So that dude got stuck in a uh, beer cooler in Wisconsin. I-, I think he wanted to get stuck. Uh, he went in there and he's like, All Yeah, right. he was planning a camp out. He's got a problem. He really uh, needs to uh, get his alcohol consumption in check. It's it's bad. It's not good for him. His name's Jeremy Van Ert. Um, he was the dumbass of the day. But we're asking you the question this morning, 543-3693. You can text there. <laughs> Weirdly enough, it's sponsored by a beer company, 805beer.com. Uh, you can find out more on uh, what they got going on in 805 and why it's the beer for your area code over at 805beer.com. Uh, but you can also uh, leave your responses on the social media. Where's the worst place that you've ever been stuck? For me, it's been it's two it's two there's it's a two headed monster, and I brought up one. I think it was last week we were talking about um, that one time I got trapped in the in my grandparents' garage because I was afraid the crows were going to attack me, right. and I was stuck in there for forty five minutes, and I just heard these crows going rawr, 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 outside, and I was convinced they were going to peck my eyeballs out, um, which I think they would have if if I would have went out. I still to this day think that those crows would have attacked me. Um, if I would have walked out of that uh, that garage and they would have got the better of me, they surrounded me. It was not it was not good, um, and I was like I don't know six, and I was stuck in the garage for forty five minutes, and that was the worst because I thought I was never going to get out of that garage. I even had the thought because my grandparents were old. I even had the thought cross my mind. I was like, 
my grandparents are old. What happens? What if they're upstairs and they're just dead and they can't hear me pounding because I was pounding on the garage door? But they were so old that they had the TV up loud and they couldn't. They could, I could hear the TV from the garage. Right. You know? <laughs> so they so, couldn't hear you screaming and pounding yeah. that you needed to get out of there. Yeah. And um, I, I was like, I was like, what if they? What if they passed away? I'm gonna be stuck in this garage forever and I can't get out because <laughs> the damn crows. And then, um, and then, um, about the same age, I remember I got stuck and I got stuck on the toilet. And what happened is we ran out of toilet paper in the entire house. And as you know, I was a latchkey kid early on. And this was second grade, so seven, eight. And I'd just become the latchkey kid. I was just given the, the, um, the license to be at home and take care of myself. Second grade, not advised, by the way. Don't do that to your kids. And uh, God, Yeah, I didn't get it till I was 13. So I come home, I go to the bathroom, and... I go to do the paperwork, and I can't because you're out. The paperwork's out. And th this leads me to this fear that I have still to this day. That moment. I don't remember much from my youth, but I do remember this. And I remember sitting there for probably two hours on the toilet. Because you're, you're stressed at that time in your life to always make sure that you clean up when you're done going to the bathroom. Wait, you didn't just go somewhere? I mean, this has happened to all of us. We we don't look over. We sit down. I was six. And then you're like, oh, I got to get another roll seven. out of the cabinet, and it's over across no, the no, bathroom. No, no, There was no other rolls in the house. I tried. <laughs> paper towel. I had used the last of you it. You probably weren't thinking paper towel because well, you're was, in second no, grade. I was told never flushed paper towels because we're on septic. Never flush <laughs> paper towels you just sat there on the toilet till somebody came I home. i sat there my dad came home and um it actually it, they were divorced at the time because they had a divorce when i was in first grade so um, he was coming to come get me for the weekend it was a friday <laughs> dad i'm in here and I need your help. Uh, no that's exactly how it went down <laughs> i heard the door open and he's like jeff jeff i'm like i'm in the bathroom go to the store now give me toilet paper <laughs> He's like, what the hell's happening? He comes running in. He looks at me. And I'm just sitting there, tooling away, tapping my toes. I've, I've been sitting what here. What kind for, of mother did you live with that wouldn't have toilet paper in the house? So I make uh. sure now that, like, we are always stocked up. Like, <laughs> if it gets down to seven rolls in the house, I'm like, oh, got to go to the store and get toilet paper. This guy says, Jeff, that he was stuck on a bus. Hi, the underneath part. How did you get under there? Well, in uh, in high school, um, we had a CIF game, and we had to take uh, one of the charter buses to L.A. And um, so before before everyone gets on the bus, you know, they take their bags and they throw them under the bus, in the big compartments. And uh, so I threw my bag underneath there, and then I went up in the bus, and I'm, I'm like, oh, you know, I forgot my, I had like, you know, water and all kinds of stuff to eat down in there. So I'm like, I got to go back under the bus. Um, I picked, I went back under the bus, but my bag had gotten shoved all the way to the other side of the bus um, in that underneath compartment. So I had to crawl in there and go get it. Well, as I was crawling in there to go get the stuff, I could see the bus driver's feet come by, and he was shutting all the compartments. And hey, I'm in here. Hey, <laughs> So he shuts the compartment, and I'm like, oh, you know, he's either playing a joke or he doesn't see me. Well, you know, the I get my stuff, and I start to I start to move towards the, you know, the opening, and it's locked. And sure enough, you know, a minute later or so, the uh, I can hear the diesel, the bus start up, and it starts moving. And by that time, I'm freaking out, like banging on the bus, like, Get me the heck out of here. In the back of my head, I'm thinking, I'm going to hyperventilate down here and freaking die <laughs> on the way down to L.A. <clears throat> and just, like, going nuts, you know? And uh, I was, this was at AG High, and uh, when the buses leave from AG, they can't, they can't turn and go directly south because they have to get on the, uh, that's that on-ramp where it goes into the fast lane where yeah. the bus can't take the fast lane, so they got to go all the way around towards, you know, the shell, shell station. Well, the bus driver didn't, they didn't figure out I was gone until they got all the way to that stoplight before you go onto the freeway north 
on the north, you know, up by the gas station. And then what, was it somebody and, on your team said something about it? or? Um, no, well, they could hear me down there. <laughs> I think the guys in the back of the bus are like, what the heck's going on down there? And they could hear me just banging, banging away, you know, and I get back up into the bus, and I've never seen a crowd of people laughing so hard in their freaking life. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. It ended up being pretty funny, but I was, uh, I was definitely scared for my life. I was going to get stuck in the bus. Yeah, on the so way that's to LA. What, like probably what, about a five minute trip that you were stuck, but that probably seemed like oh, hours. Oh, yeah, easily. <laughs> you know, and, yeah, and, you know, the bus is moving. I'm like, you know, the, the wheels are turning my head. I'm like, here we go. That I'm takes the cake down here. That takes the cake for the worst place to get stuck. Well, I mean, we've heard of. Uh, no, I think it's worse. Have you heard these uh, these guys that work the the, the at the air at the airport? They they load luggage into the airplanes, and uh, there's been guys that have been trapped in there, and the plane oh, yeah, takes yeah. off, and they land like Seattle to L. A. And they had to ride in the luggage compartment the whole way because yeah, that uh, been me. <laughs> that would have been you. That's exactly that's, Well, it. that's what I thought of. This happened a couple of years ago or a year ago or something like that. Some guy for, had to ride a, an Alaska Airlines flight from Seattle. Thank God they they put oxygen in that damn wow. thing. Wow. Yeah. Dude, that's crazy that's, that you, you got stuck underneath the bus. Do you ever... Yeah. Uh, what would you have done if you would have been... Um, uh, you would have went all the way to L.A.? Well, luckily I had all my food and, you know, water <laughs> down there, so... <laughs> But, uh, but did not, you have a know, flashlight? But the, diesel, the diesel fumes would have taken me, for sure. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, it was pretty strong <laughs> in diesel fumes down there, huh? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Terrible, man. Yeah. All right, man. Wow. Hey, Great story. Yeah, yeah see that, you later. That's a, that's a good one. That's the I, worst. I mean, you group. could live. I mean, I, I don't know about the diesel fumes. It I don't know. Like I don't bad. know if you could live. Who knows? Well, you, you're just in You don't know. Nobody's done that experiment before, okay? What? Nobody's done the five-hour uh, stuck under a bus experiment. Jeff and Jeremy in the morning.